Um, why, why are we talking about complete streets first, and, and, and where did we go wrong, and, and why do we now have to go back and reevaluate our infrastructure when um, it shouldn't be that hard? So uh, these are two set street sections in Grand Rapids, and the, the upper portion is a traditional neighborhood when block lengths were 300 feet, quite walkable, um, very tightly woven, so you could choose multiple ways to go. And the one on the bottom is how we're doing a lot of streets today. Not interconnected, about a half mile to a mile to go around the block. And uh, it's, it's a lot more difficult to be able to go any place unless you're in a car. Well, even in a car. And the land use patterns have followed it. So, you know, you've got, these are both one mile square sections. Uh, you've got the uptown neighborhood, if you're familiar with that, Fulton, Lake Drive, Cherry, Wealthy. Red is commercial, yellow is residential, the tan color is multifamily, all interwoven, five, ten minute walk to go between districts, you've got your local shopping there, everything's mixed, very handy. The other section is down by 44th Street, uh, single use districts, everything segregated to be able to go from the multifamily house over to visit and sell the Girl Scout cookies over here, whoa, you got to get in the car. Right? And when you're building it, there's usually not a sidewalk. Well, Complete Streets is trying to fix that. Uh, so we're looking at how do we plan, design, operate, maintain, so that all legal users have access to transportation infrastructure. So all users is basically everybody, pedestrians, bicyclists, transit, motorists, trucks, um, children, elderly, people of various abilities. So that's a third of the population doesn't drive. They're too old, too young, too poor, disabled, maybe got taken away by the police. Uh, so they, they, can't, they, they can't get around. So you've isolated a third of your population because they can't drive a car. And so Complete Streets is really looking at how do we fix that? How do we make it so everyone has access within the community to the various opportunities that are available to them by providing an interconnected street network? for that links destinations, employment, education, housing. It's all linked together so you don't have to have a car to go everywhere. Um, mobility, I love these, you know, if you're a trans transportation engineer, it's access, mobility, and safety, right? Those are the big, the, the trifecta. Um, so you have access on one side, accessibility on one side, and mobility on the other. You have controlled you know, rights of way with big boulevards because you're trying to control access so you have more mobility. Right? So these things all work together. So mobility, you have a full array of facilities. You have multiple choices. It's not just you have to get in the car. You want to make sure it's safe for people and all users again. And that you're also reflecting the character of the community. So you're looking at context, which is really, really important because not every situation fits. You don't have a solu the same solution for every situation. The benefits are huge. Um, the environmental benefits, we looked at greenhouse gas emissions, reduced carbon footprint, less oil dependency. In Grand Rapids, we looked at our greenhouse gas emissions, and 42% of our greenhouse gas emissions are due to transportation. So how do you automatically just talk about a mode shift, get people out of their cars and do something different? Social, more active lifestyles. If you live in an area where you can bike and walk, you're supposed to be seven pounds later. I like that little fact. Um, increased mobility and independence. How are you going to get to work, to school? How are you going to do that? There was an article in the Grand Rapids Press this weekend that was talking about the condition in Michigan. And it says the number of households with no vehicle rose by 40,000, while the number of two or more vehicles dropped by 150,000. These are people who are now completely isolated. How are they, if they're living out in the more modern, cul-de-sac neighborhoods with no sidewalks, no transit access, and no, no bike lanes, how are they going to get to job opportunities to change their economic situation? So it's huge. And then, of course, quality of life, that you, you feel comfortable being able to go out. You're safe on your city, your streets. Economic, fewer and less severe crash reductions, access to jobs and education, I already mentioned that, and then placemaking. So you got the three legs of the stool for sustainability. See, I got the trifecta for transportation engineers, the trifecta for sustainability. It's all good. But there's, of course, challenges with looking at how do we do complete streets. Um, and I'm just going to kind of cover those really briefly. And then there's also policy considerations. So the two big challenges with talking about complete streets are design and policy. And for, um, 
for design, of course, on-street parking. You know, are you going to take off on-street parking to be able to provide bike lanes? How, do you, how wide, how much street right-of-way do you have? Um, typical right-of-way in Grand Rapids is 66 feet. So to be able to do travel lanes, on-street parking, bike lanes, sidewalk, and parkway, you need about 77 feet. So we're about 11 feet shy. So it makes it, you know, you really get into this debate about whether or not you keep on-street parking. Um, or do you sacrifice your parkway and sidewalk, or do you want to make sure, you know, which, what are you holding sacred when you're, when you're trying to do design? And she really shouldn't be riding her bike on the sidewalk. It's not safe. Um, travel and turn lanes. You know, how do you, how do you balance, again, that mobility and accessibility piece uh, when you're looking at how you design, or do you design for future? A lot of places are now going on to road diets, um, and they're taking what used to be a four-lane cross-section, and they're making it a three-lane cross-section, and they're adding this white edge line or bike lanes or both um, on the edge. Travel volume and level of service. You still, have this, you, you still have this primary function of moving cars and you're trying to balance that with these other modes and you still have to move the cars. Um, so how are you, you know, some streets aren't gonna have every application. Maybe it's, you got 40,000 cars on a street and you can't fit a bike lane in because you need the lanes. So you're trying to balance what that is as well as congestion. Um, because then you're kind of going backwards on your greenhouse gas emissions. Pedestrians and traffic calming. How do you narrow up and create some pinch points where you're automatically creating gateways into neighborhood business districts, you're shortening the travel distance for people to cross the street, and you're calming the traffic at the same time. Um, what's the function of the street? You know, this is going on to a highway on-ramp. You've got a fire station right there. What's the, what's the role of the street? So you're not in a residential street where you might be able to do some different modifications versus some other primary streets where there's limited things that you can do. And then again, what's the context of that street? Is it a big 28th street where it's very intense commercial and you've got lots and lots of cars? Or is it a neighborhood commercial district where you want it to be, it's very, very walkable with storefront buildings and, and you're looking at what that kind of treatment will be. And so there's different, there's different approaches that you can take when you're designing complete streets. And I think that's one of the big misconceptions about complete streets is it's one size fits all, that everything has to have a bike facility and you have to have a sidewalk and you have to have um, you know, all the different pieces to it. Sometimes you just can't, and, or you find alternative routes or you find another you know, off street, another location where you can do that. And then continuity, so your bike lane doesn't go right into the back of a car. But then also, how are, you, how are you connecting those dots? How are you connecting your neighborhood business districts to your schools? How are you creating a network so you're not just dropping people off on a major street and they have no idea where they're going? Um, so you gotta look at that. Uh, in Grand Rapids, what we've done is really a team approach to be able to try to design complete streets. And actually, um, without calling it complete streets, we've been doing it for over a decade. But uh, we really take a strong design philosophy. We actually, engineering, planning, all my friends listed here, is wa fire, water, sewer, the rapid, we all get together every other week and design stuff. We'll go actually out and we'll walk the street, we'll debate about it. Yes, we get in fights sometimes, um, but we are all still friends at the end of the day. Um, but we debate this stuff about what's, how are we gonna weigh the design of this, this street with the overall values of the community, and then we also get neighborhood input on you know, kind of what's the general function. Um, and it, it's sometimes, sometimes a challenge, but we're very intentional on how we're doing it. And one of our latest examples is a pilot project that we've been doing in partnership with MDOT. Uh, this is Division Avenue, and we put it on a road diet. It's 16,000 cars a day. Um, four lane cross section, five in some locations. We now, they're missing the on street parking here, but uh, we took it down to three lanes with bike lanes. And uh, it, on the north section of division, there's full bike lanes. On the southern section, we had to do sharrows because we didn't have enough road width. So it can be done. You can get really wild and crazy. And this is the, the, one of the busiest streets in downtown. And everybody thought, our traffic engineer was sure, he would have bet money, it was going to blow up. And it hasn't. So um, there's lots of really creative things that you can do if you're really willing to experiment. And what we said with this is it's just paint. And that's all it was. We didn't make any changes to the, to the street other than just change paint and signs, just to try it. So it can be done. 
Uh, we also do simple things like we require sidewalks for every development project. We require the installation of bike um, racks for everything. And then um, these are some of the policy considerations that we need to look at regarding maintenance, uh, liability, although it's not as bad as you think, funding. Um, how do you do education and promotion to get a mode shift, again, get people in the mentality to expect to see bicyclists and pedestrians? And you know, how do you kind of make the whole thing happen from an implementation standpoint? So that's my bit. And I can talk about you know, different approaches that you can undertake when you're doing complete streets. Thank you.